Hello, this is a guide on how to set up Answers Remote Solve Manager from the user machine. So this is a follow-up video. If you've already set up RSM on the Remote Solve machine or the head node and subsequent compute nodes if you have them. So this is how the user setup would be to point to the Remote Solve resource. So we'll want to open RSM configuration and right now you'll see under HPC resource, there's already a resource there called localhost. This is if they want to background solve on their own machine, but I'm gonna add an HPC resource up here. And I'm going to name it HPC cluster. Uh, the HPC type is ARC, as I'm using ARC as the job scheduler. You can set it up to use uh, other job schedulers. So if you have Windows HPC or PBS Pro or Torque, um, you can choose those options. This setup guide is for RSM and ARC. So ARC is the job scheduler that ANSYS provides. The submit host is the head node that I set up which is called training01. You can use the IP address here if you wish. Uh, it is recommended that you use the fully qualified domain name if you are in a domain. And the operating system is a Windows machine. And then we'll uncheck this as this is for Linux only. And then we'll hit apply to go to the next step. Okay, so we got a green check mark here. That means that we've added all the information that we needed so we can go on to file management. All right, in my other video, I pointed out that uh, I set up a staging directory on the head node itself. Uh, I also mentioned that this staging directory doesn't have to reside on the head node. It can be on a file server or a shared location uh, on your network. But this is where we would specify um, that staging directory. So I'm going to use the RSM internal file transfer mechanism. If you do want to find out more about the different options, uh, you can click tell me more. Okay, and the directory path for me is on the D drive uh, from the folder called RSM staging. Okay, the next selection is HPC side file management. This is if you want to set up a scratch directory on each execution node, if you wish. If you are running a one remote solver machine setup, uh, you would keep this as HPC staging. If you are doing a multiple machine cluster setup, uh, you can have a local scratch directory on each execution node. All right, the final checkbox here is if you want to keep the job files in the staging directory when the job is complete, the files will remain in the staging directory until they are manually deleted. This is a good option if you have poor network connection in case results fail to be retrieved successfully. They will still be in the staging directory and can be retrieved manually. Note that this will consume a lot of storage space and the staging directory will need to be manually emptied regularly. If you don't have any concerns about your network connection, turning this setting on will delete results files from the staging directory when they are retrieved by the user. Okay, after your selections are made, just hit apply. We got a green check mark here, that means we can move on to the next step. All right, default and local are the RSM queues that are created automatically when you do the initial setup on the remote solver. So I'm gonna hit apply and we're gonna submit a job to the default queue. Okay, so I got a green check mark. 
That means that I submit, successfully submitted a test job to the remote machine. From the client side, there are a couple of monitors that I would like to point out for RSM. Uh, in the start menu, the two I'll point out is RSM cluster monitoring and RSM job monitor. So let me just open both. Okay, let's focus on the job monitor for now. Uh, the job monitor is all the jobs that the user has submitted. Um, as you can see, this was the test job that I submitted from the RSM configuration that was finished and successful. The other one I'd like to point out is the cluster load monitoring. So I'm just going to change this to HPC cluster and refresh. So this is a good resource for your users to look at to see if the cluster is free or which nodes are free or um, if a node is down for maintenance. They can actually also see all the jobs that were submitted, uh, finished ones and ones that are currently running and who the owner is. So it won't only show jobs that just they've submitted, but um, everyone's job here as well. Okay, I'm going to just demonstrate how to submit to a remote solver uh, in Ansys Mechanical. You'll want to be in the Home tab, and right next to the Solve Lightning Bolt, you'll see a tiny uh, arrow on the bottom. We'll want to click that to set Solve Process Settings. And we will want to add a queue. And I'm just going to call this the HPC cluster. Okay, and then from here, we can add the RSM queue. Now, if you'll remember, uh, let me just pull up my RSM configuration here. Um, you can see the queues default local and overnight. So these match the RSM queues that are going to show up here. Uh, you can rename these queues in the ARC configuration on the head node, in which case it will carry over the name change to here. Um, and you can also see here, this is an overnight queue I created to submit jobs uh, that can run overnight. So I'm just going to set this to default. Uh, you'll be able to confirm that you're submitting it to the right HPC configuration. Uh, if you'll remember, I called this configuration HPC cluster. Uh, the type is ARC as it's using the ARC job scheduler. And here you can specify the job name if you wish. I'm going to keep it as mechanical. I'm going to highlight right here. This is where you actually choose the license for uh, the solve. So you'll want to choose uh, your solver license or a solve capable license here. Now remember the setting will be saved. So if this is something that you need to change often, you have to remind yourself to come back here and uh, edit. Uh, the license here if you have different licenses available to you during different times. I'm going to also click Advanced. Uh, this is where you can set the number of cores or if you want GPU acceleration. I will highlight as well license queuing. Um, if you are limited on the number of licenses that you can use, I would turn on license queuing. This allows for the job to wait for a license before solving. If you did not have this turn on and there were no licenses available, your job would actually fail. And then when you retrieve the solutions, you would then see the error message saying that there were no licenses available. Uh, to avoid that annoyance, I recommend that most people turn on license queuing. Therefore, when they submit a job, they can then check the job scheduler and they would see that it's not solving and most likely it's because it's just waiting for a license. And then from here you can choose the new solve process setting I created, HPC cluster. Uh, 
I'm actually going to pull up these two monitors really quick. So this is the job monitor. As you can see, this is the job we just submitted. And oh, I don't think I was fast enough, but you can see here that actually I selected two cores for solving and actually you can see the two cores are still in use, but I think if I refresh now, you can see that they're free. And you can see that that was the last job I submitted and how many cores it was using. Okay, so the job is finished. We can come back here and get results. And that's how you submit a job to a remote solver in Ansys Mechanical.